Hi, this is Evan at Stride, and in this video, we're going to be talking about understanding the power duration curve. Starting off, it's important to understand the power duration model. For shorter durations, you will be able to output higher intensity, and as that duration goes longer, you'll be able to output less power or less intensity over time. A helpful way to think about this might be understanding that for a 5K all-out race, you'll be able to run faster and output a higher power compared to running an all-out 10K. You'll be able to output less power as you increase that duration. It's also helpful to understand how the power duration curve is actually graphed. On the y-axis, or the left-hand side of the graph, you'll have your watts starting at zero and going up to the maximum amount of watts that you've output. On the x-axis, or the bottom of the graph, you'll have your duration starting at one second and going all the way out to the maximum duration that you've used stride for. The power duration curve is a collection of all the data you've recorded over the past 90 days, but the data that's graphed is your maximum power output for that duration. Multiple runs can make up your power duration curve, and it's important to identify where the runs are contributing to your power duration curve. Currently, on stride.com slash power center in your profile section, you'll be able to view your power duration curve. Your power duration curve is made up of what we consider three different time periods. The first being 1 to 30 days, the second being 31 to 75 days, and the third being 76 days to 90 days. As an activity comes closer to falling out of consideration for your power duration curve, it'll turn from blue to green to gray. So you'll know that some of your activities are about to drop out of that consideration window. You can interact with your power duration curve in multiple ways. Other videos in this series will include talking about how to understand your auto-calculated critical power and your modeled curve, as well as your training distribution and comparing power duration curves over time. We hope you found this introduction to understanding the power duration curve helpful, and please stay tuned for more videos on the subject. Bye-bye.